Wow, I'm a little bit nervous. I wanted to try something different, and even though I probably look like a dork walking around my neighborhood like this, I just wanted to try doing a kind of vlog style video about structures today. So first off, what is a structure? A structure is anything that has a, a definite size and shape and that does something, that fulfills a purpose. So that def definition makes it seem like pretty much anything can be a structure and that's true. Structure. Structure. Yep. Structure. Structure. This tree? Yeah, that's a structure too. I'd say usually when we hear the word structure, we have a tendency to just think of a, a building, uh, like this daycare center behind me. Um, we, we generally just think of those as structures, but the structure, the definition of a structure is a lot more broad. If anything that has a function and a definite shape as a structure, that pretty much includes everything. And it doesn't make a distinction between living and non-living things. It's not just buildings. A living thing is a structure. I'm a structure. You can also look at, consider smaller parts of a, a bigger structure as a structure themselves. For example, my skeleton is a structure as well. So if anything that takes up space and has a purpose as a structure, um, this sign behind me is a structure. So is this fire hydrant. And so is that house behind me. All of those are structures. To be able to do its job, a, a structure has to be able to withstand forces. You've probably heard the word forces before. Usually they're described as a push or pull on something. Sometimes we call these forces loads. It's the weight a structure has to hold up or the forces that it has to be able to withstand. Take this tree, for example, over here. Um, the tree has to be able to hold up the weight of all of the leaves and, and acorns on it. And it also has to be able to withstand the force of the wind or weather. So if there's a heavy snowstorm when it's not ready for it, some of the tree branches might not be able to support that load. The loads that structures have to support are unique to each structure. Not every structure is designed for the same loads. In fact, structures are specifically designed to withstand certain loads. The bench behind me, for example, has to be able to withstand the load of a person sitting, well, multiple people sitting on it. Meanwhile, these trees behind me have completely different loads that need, they need to be able to withstand. It's useful for us to be able to classify structures and we have two main categories that we use to, to classify structures to begin with. Um, the first one is natural structures. That's anything that is not made by people. This pine cone is a natural structure. The trees behind me are natural structures. Uh, beehives, beaver dams, birds nests, all natural structures. Now, the, one of the confusing things is a beehive is not just sitting there already made, it's actually manufactured by bees. But we still count it as a natural structure as long as it's not made by people. So it can be made by animals, that's fine, Anything made by humans is from the other category, the manufactured structures. Manufactured structures can take on all sorts of forms. The playground behind me is one type of a manufactured structure. It's made by people, it's got a definite shape, it takes up space, and it serves a purpose, to have fun on. There's a lot more types of manufactured structures as well. It's not just buildings. Keep in mind that anything that has a definite shape and has a purpose is a structure. Shoes, water bottles, that street light I just passed, this bus shelter that I'm walking beside and the sidewalk that I'm walking on right now, these are all examples of manufactured structures. Another way to classify structures is to look at how they're put together. We're going to look at three types, mass, shell, and frame structures. The simplest type is mass structure. Basically it's just a pile or packed together thing of similar materials. So this hill that I'm walking on, this is a mass structure. A tree trunk is another example of a mass structure. It's a pile of similar materials all packed together. Mountains and beaver dams are examples of natural mass structures. Well, sand castles, brick walls, and the pyramids are examples of manufactured mass structures. Now an advantage of mass structures is that they're made of so many similar little pieces that if a structure loses some of those pieces, it doesn't really impact the structure overall. So these can last a really long time. This pathway that I'm standing on right now is an example of a mass structure. It's losing pieces all the time, whether it's from the weather eroding it away or it's my feet or a bike 
going over it. It's still functioning and it can still fulfill its purpose even though it loses these pieces. It just has so many of them, it doesn't matter if it loses some. The next type of structure that we're going to talk about is a frame structure. Frame structures are made out of long thin pieces. And because of this, they're relatively easy to put together and they don't take up a lot of materials since there's a lot of empty space involved. Frame structures are often covered up with a thin material so we can't always see them. But think of an umbrella. An umbrella is a great example of a frame structure. We've got long thin pieces of a metal covered by a thin material so that it can perform its function which is to block the rain. Even though the tiny pieces of metal are really thin, they're still strong enough to support the loads that that umbrella is going to encounter. That's the rain on top and also the weight of the covering or the tension from the covering. Most of the buildings we build are frame structures underneath. You can't always see the frame but if you've ever seen a building in process like the one behind me you can easily see the frame structure hiding beneath. It's a a whole pile of long thin materials designed in a way to support the loads that it needs to. A lot of the time the load will come from the roof, it has to be able to support that. If it can't support the building itself, it can't do its job. If you can see the yellow fence behind me, you can see another example of a frame structure. But that thing behind it, that, that container, that brings me to the last type of structures that we're going to talk about. The shell structure. Shell structures are made of a thin, carefully shaped material to get their shape and strength. Um, these are great containers because they have a lot of empty space and since it's a thin layer they don't use a lot of materials um, so they're cheap to build. Most structures that are designed to hold something are shell structures. Think of the most common natural example, an egg. An egg has to be able to contain the fluid inside um, and it has to also be able to support the mother's weight. One of the trade-offs you get with making a shell structure is they're good at distributing weight as long as it's easy, evenly placed around it. You can take an egg and you can squeeze it as hard as you can and you won't break it as long as you're putting the fort force kind of equally distributed around the outside. However, here's the disadvantage. If a shell structure is faced with a force in a concentrated area, it's going to break pretty easily. Okay, so if you squeeze that egg with your, your hand around it like this, it's not going to break. But as soon as you put one force on one particular part of that concentrated in one spot, the shell breaks really easily. Here we got some more examples of shell structures that we make. These garbage bins. They're designed to hold garbage. They're made of a thin layer of material, carefully shaped, without any kind of frame inside to support it. Other examples of shell structures are water bottles, milk cartons, tanker trucks, and some kinds of barns. And those are the three main types of structures. We choose what type of structure to build based on what the purpose of the structure is and what kind of loads that structure is going to need to be able to support whether it's the weight of a heavy person sitting on it or the ability to withstand the wind or an earthquake all of those things need to be considered when we're building the structure obviously purpose is important too if we need that structure to hold something we need to make be able to make something with a big enough space to fit whatever we need to fit into it it all depends on what purpose the structure is supposed to serve we choose the structure type based on the function of the structure. Please let me know if any of this was unclear. Um, just ask, ask a comment below or on Google Classroom.